Check, check. You hear me now? I think you hear me now. Sorry. I, I went, my bad. So I went and it, seemed, it was good earlier, but it should be good now. Um, I apologize for that. So anyway, so uh, I'm going to be doing a tiered rank list of every, of some of the greatest moments of uh, Michael Jordan and Larry Bird, or excuse me, Michael Jordan's career. This first one is uh, God and Jim Short. So I apologize for the sound. It uh, it seemed to be working earlier. Must have switched over. So I apologize for that. Um, working off of Surface Pro is a little funny. Anyway, so the first out of the 11 greatest moments of all time is Larry Bird saying that God uh, was disguised as Michael Jordan or Michael Jordan was God and Jim Shorts amongst a bunch of other analogies of how great Michael Jordan was. He had scored 63 points in this game uh, when they played uh, when they played each other and in the playoffs. And it still is a record to this day. I believe it's his coming out party. And I think it's one of the most amazing moments just hearing Larry Bird, who was an all time great, just bask in what Michael Jordan was able to do to them, although they ended up winning in five games. It still, excuse me, was still an amazing moment. I think it just really showed out because this was, I believe, his second year in the league. Uh, all of you are here. Aaron Adams says greatest moment might be that 91 finals. That uh, is a great one, and we will get to that one. But let me go back and rate this one for me. Where would you rate this moment? Uh, Bird saying that uh, Michael Jordan was God in Jim Shorts. Let me know in the chat. So for me, I'm going to have to say, because some of these have to go lower than others. It's a shame. I'm going to have to give it, although it was an amazing moment, I'm going to have to give it a C. And the only reason I give it a C, oh, it's not showing up. It's crazy. I, I'm used to having multiple screens. So with the, uh, I give it a C uh, only because he didn't win the series, but I think it was a great, I think it was his coming out moment. Uh, I think he put the world on notice, especially with Bird acknowledging how great he was. And it's something that I think needs to be accounted for as one of the greatest moments within his career. It, again, it's a record to this day, the 63 points in a playoff game. Absolutely outstanding. And doing it against one of the greatest teams of all time in the 1986 Celtics. So it's something, and Cincinnati Bengals Sacramento Kings fan says, the fact that MJ scored 63 points in that game to an average, like over 40-some points in that series, is insane. Exactly. And that was in this, uh, you know, that was only a couple of years into the league. So it, it was absolutely insane. So I think it this, that was probably, if I had to say, there was one moment that projected him further on, uh, throughout the career that he had, I think that really was the, a great first step to have. All right. So now we're going to go on to the next moment, which is the slam dunk contest. And that, or entirely the 1988 All-Star Game weekend. Um, to include the 1988 dunk contest, Michael Jordan in that time won his second dunk contest. Uh, he had faced off against Dominique Wilkins, and he had had such legendary um, dunk contests where he faced off against Clyde Drexler as well. Dr. J was in them. It was amazing dunk contest back in the day, but this is the one where he did the free throw line Dr. J dunk. This entire All-Star weekend was absolutely amazing. He was able to go and win the All-Star game, MVP, win the game. And then also that year for in totality, although he didn't win any championships, he was the regular season MVP, defensive player of the year, and had done these as well. But that 1988 All-Star game weekend, I believe, is one of the greatest moments and one of the most iconic moments that he ever had. Uh, the there's so many uh, 
fl uh, highlights, flashbacks that a lot of big time sports media companies will go and they'll play often when they go and they talk about the greatness of Michael Jordan. I think it needs to be accounted for as one of the greatest moments in his career. And where I rank this, let me know where you guys think this should be ranked on a scale of SABCDF in the chat. And I'm going to pull it up where I believe it should go. 88 All-Star Weekend. If I can grab it. All right. 88 All-Star Weekend. I give that a B. And I think that is really the, uh, even though I had said that the 86 was the first step, I think the 88 All-Star Weekend really cemented him being that guy and that year in total. He had won scoring titles, but he had won the MVP. He had won the All-Star Game MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. It's something, uh, he just didn't win the championship. But I think this, for him being arguably the greatest player in the league at the time, I think 1988, this All-Star Game weekend was really him saying, I am that guy in the entire league. Um, uh, Aaron, or Cincinnati Bengals, so it's not going to lie, Jordan versus Dominique was a showdown, but some people say that Dominique got robbed in that dunk contest. Not sure if it's true or not. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an argument. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't hate it. I mean, they, they both were absolutely amazing. So to say that Dominique won, I don't think it's crazy. Uh, but I mean, there, it, it was such an iconic moment, and, and just to even get the edge on Dominique in, in total, even if he, uh, or just to compete, was iconic in itself. Uh, both uh, Aaron Adams, Cincinnati say it'd be an A. I want to give it an A. A lot of me does. I just have to I have to spread out some of this stuff. So I, would, I have to give it a B. Um, but I think I think it arguably could be an A. I agree with that. Uh, True Believer says I had the poster for that free throw line dunk on the wall of my Marine Barracks. Such an iconic shot. Yeah, absolutely. It's you know, it's one of the most iconic moments in the NBA's history. Uh, Kev Fox says, I believe his greatest moment is either the 96 season after coming back and winning again or the 98 finals. Uh, too many great moments. And we will be getting to them as well. Um, so, yeah, I had rated this a B. I, uh, I might have not shown it as I had, I had put it over there, but I rated it a B. Um, but I can see how it could be an A. All right. Y'all, we're going to go into... Uh, one of the, uh, this iconic moment, which is the shot, the 1989 first round against the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, where he put the ice over on Cleveland um, and that helped project them further on into the Eastern Conference Finals. It's the famous him fist pumping over and over and over again. Ice it out. I believe the ending score was 101 to 100 in a in a series ending game. So absolutely iconic moment um and it, it's something it, it, and again when they go and they show all of these clips back in the day this is one of the ones that always pop up with with this is shot and it's something that needs to be accounted for it's something that was absolutely amazing it was the icebreaker and for it it hasn't happened for a lot of all-time greats a lot of them don't have these buzzer beaters that win series. And, you know, this is one of the greatest ones um, of all time, although it was early in, uh, earlier on before he had won championships and it was the first round of this playoff series. It's something that, again, was absolutely amazing. Aaron Adams says he'll give it a B. Uh, welcome, Chirac. And everyone else, True Believer, Kev Hawk. Um, and Aaron Adams says, I think they were down before that shot, or am I going crazy? Yeah, I believe he was down, and then he uh, iced that. They were down, and then they iced that shot. All right, let me bring this up for the, the, the list. All right, so for this list, I am going to put the shot. Y'all might hate me for this. I got to give it an F. It's it's really one of the ones that I am. It is it's really one of the greatest moments that I least uh, love, and that's because 
although they went far that year with Doug Collins to the Eastern Conference Finals, they lost in six games to the Pistons. Mm -hmm. Really, whatever came from the shot, other than the iconic uh, fist pumping, is a great highlight, great film to catch uh, Michael Jordan just with that him just being absolutely in the moment, intense, just loving the moment that he had gotten over that series win. But what happened from it? He got to the Eastern Conference Finals and lost. However, uh, it is not for me personally there. I would have to give it an F. Now, the only reason I give it an F is because a lot of these probably I would give a C to an S. Now, however, some somebody's got to get an F just because – there, there would be no F here otherwise. But um, uh, Chirac says, Michael Jordan's the only celebrity I love. I don't care about celebrities, but he gave me so many good childhood memories. So I hope God keeps Michael Jordan a long time. Yeah, no, he's one of my favorites growing up. He, Him and my mom may, uh, had me fall in love with basketball. Uh, he says, I hope God keeps Michael Jordan on earth for a long time. Um Cincinnati says, this moment right here, my grandpa's a Cavaliers fan. And he told me that once MJ hit that shot to eliminate his Cavaliers, my grandpa told me that this was the moment that he became a Jordan fan. No, yeah, uh, again, a great moment. Um, I'm just saying with everything else. <laughs> uh, B, what? It's, a, it's the moment, though. It is the one of the moments, so I totally get it, uh, you know. For me, it's just one of the the ones that I value the least, but it is an absolute great moment. It's on the list. Um, too many classic moments to count. One hand to dribble around his body and caught it with the other hand. That was spectacular. i never seen anybody do that. Yep, absolutely. Kobe Bryant is why I got into basketball, but Jordan is the GOAT. Yeah, Kobe is great, and welcome Denali as well. All right, so let's get into the next one which is yeah i apologize i only got one screen so i'm a little slower at this stuff the 91 championship uh for the chicago bulls the people that go when they uh when people were saying that they couldn't get over the hump they couldn't beat the celtics they couldn't beat the pistons they got past them they end up beating the lakers and I believe five games absolutely destroyed the last game. I believe he had 30 points and <laughs> Denali says, Dart, who was the white goat? My boat, my vote is for Dirk. Now I'd have to, I'd have to say um, in total uh, for what, for what people generally account for, I'd say bird. But if I had to say somebody else, I'd have to go with my man, George Mikan, but nobody, nobody cares about George Mikan. So for, for one of uh, the more uh, popular guys, I'd have to say Bird. But the 91 finals is when he actually, uh, the people were starting to argue that he was the greatest of all time. Uh, it was the beginning of it all. He he went and he won. Um, I think he had won his second MVP this year. He had won, I believe, uh, five, five scoring titles. Um, and... It was the, the beginning of really what kicked off uh, the championship runs, the two three-peats, or at least the first three-peat, which we'll get into something else later about that. And then ultimately what just cemented him as uh, the run that eventually cemented him as the GOAT. So the 91 championship really put him on the map for being a winner, which a lot of people at the time said if you were a scoring title champion, that they – uh, you know, didn't really have the capacity to win championships. So this really turned that around because he had won the scoring title uh, every year after that, except for when he came back from retirement as well and won every championship with that as well. Uh, Aaron Adams says, so 91 was kind of ridiculous after being told a scorer came. Oh, I was just talking about that. He said, okay. I'll score and I'll average more assists than the best passer ever. Keep in mind, this is his first finals. Yeah, exactly. He did that as well. Uh, I think Jordan the Bulls were underdogs in that series. Yeah, I think coming into it, um, I think you're right. 
At one point, he hit like 12 field goals in a row. MJFB, maybe the better structure would be just to rank moments rather than make a tier list. Seems ambiguous to require an F when all moments were good and valuable. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You know, this is just something I put together. But, yeah, maybe next time I'll go and just do a, an ordered list. Um, I get your point, Pizza Time. Thank you. Can't compare Michael Jordan to any other athlete in sports. His mixtapes of highlights destroys any other athletes. Michael Jordan is unrankable. Yeah, that's fair. Imagine SGA winning it versus Boston. Yeah, maybe. I don't I don't think they're going to get that far. Chirac is definitely bird for the white goat. All right. So now I will be ranking uh, this one. And I have to rank this number one title. At the A list, I believe it's an A. Now, I, I, I know that Aaron Adams was talking about it being an S. I could see it being an S, too. I just think there are a couple that I prefer personally as being S tier. Um, it's but yeah, absolutely amazing. This really put him on the map. Um, in respect to being a, a true competitor as a winner, the GOAT debate started, and then it just went from there. But an absolutely amazing moment as, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant kind of, I don't want to say he stole it from Michael, but very similar pictures when you look back on it when they go and they were hugging that championship. All right, let's get into the next one. All right. Back to back. So this is the 1992 championship where he faced off against Clyde Drexler and the Portland Trail Blazers. They had gone to the finals before, uh, and they'd also gone to the Western Conference finals before uh, in the last few years. They were an amazing team. A lot of people like to overlook it. And this is the series that the shrug happened in, where I believe he made six three-pointers in, in a half, uh, which I believe – that might be a record still, or at least it was a record for most three pointers and a half in a, in a, in a final series that might've been broken, but I think that was a record if I'm not mistaken. Um, absolutely amazing series for Michael Jordan. Uh, it's, it's something that I think it's overlooked a lot. And for anyone to go back to back is, you know, insane in itself. So that's only happened a few times, let alone three-peating. And Michael Jordan did that twice as well. So to go back-to-back -back against Clyde Drexler, who was known as his rival or somebody that was comparable to him, to come out on top of him, I think meant a lot for Michael Jordan's legacy to cement, for the people, the naysayers, to say that Clyde Drexler might have been better than him. It just shows that, it showed that he was better in total. He was greater than him in the moment. An amazing moment. Where do you guys rank this in the chat? Where would you, how would you rank this from an S to F tier or at least 1 to 11 if you want to do it that way? Um, just let me know in the chat. I'm going to bring up. What's up, Jamal? All right. So we've got. We've got this one, the 92 title. I'm going to have to give that one. I'm going to have to, oh, this is tough, man. I don't really want to give any anybody a, a lot of these. I would just have C to S. It's, it's hard, man. It's really hard to do this. Um, because all, all of these moments are absolutely amazing. It's really hard going through this right now. Um, man, I got to say, I got to give it a C because I, I, I just, I don't want to, I want to make it higher. It could be, yeah, true believer it being an A, it's very well worth an A. Um, all of these are pretty much worth an A. But at the same time, I didn't want to make it so jokey where everything's an S or an A or a B because it really could have been that way. I could have just made it three tiers. That probably would have been more fair, honestly, because I, I, I find it hard to just say that 
these moments were trash, like the shot. The shot wasn't trash. I just think it was the least great one, um, let alone the 92 title or the 91 title. Um, it, it's hard, man. This is really hard to do. It, it's tough. All right, let's get to the next one. All right. Where is it? All right, the first three, Pete. The 93 championship. All right, the 93 championship. He faces off against his best friend, Charles Barkley, and the Phoenix Suns. He had just gotten traded there uh, with Kevin Johnson, with Dan Marley. Ended up being an absolutely amazing team. Went to the NBA Finals. Charles wins MVP that year, and the two best friends face off against each other. And it's, it's uh, you know, it's something that, and then also this was the, uh, the uh, when his father ends up dying as well. So it's, it's crazy, this whole thing to get the first three-peat, um, them winning the NBA championship on Father's Day after his father gets murdered. It was a whole thing. And the first people to three paint since the, the Boston Celtics of the 60s. Absolutely amazing moment. And then sadly, after that, he retires. So it could have been a picture perfect moment for retirement. And not that the future didn't hold anything better. Uh, but you know what I mean? It's it was a, an amazing moment in itself. Uh, yeah, let it was absolutely amazing. These are so hard to rank. I think this one for me is a little easier to rank, though. Um, and I put that on the S tier because he got he got the three Pete. He did it with his father dying, and then he retired. And people thought that they may never see Michael Jordan play basketball again. And he would have came out on top, uh, winning seven scoring titles, three championships. And what would it be? Uh, 10 years, I believe. Uh, yeah. Well, no, no, less than, or less than 10 years, eight years. So my, my math is off right now. But anyway, so absolutely amazing. And uh, just to come back with the, you know, with his father dying, did it for him. Absolutely amazing. Oh, I'm sorry, Jamal. Yeah, I. Um, but yeah, so, um, no, it, no, it was, it was, uh, yeah, no, you're right. But, uh, he died, his father died in 93 and that's when he retired. So yeah, my bad. I mixed, I mixed that up, but, um, anyway, let's get to the next one. Yeah, you're right, Jamal. Yeah, I, I mixed that up. But uh, let's go through some of the chat. True Believer says that was some great basketball to watch in that series. Give it an A at least. Crazy fact about uh, Jordan's championships is that all the teams that Jordan beat in the finals, every single team were a better team than the Bulls, but Jordan was the X factor. Yeah, a lot of those teams arguably were. Um, uh, you know, I think that the Bulls were an amazing team as well. I just – think that Michael Jordan was just heading above more or less everybody that played on either side of the court. But, but yeah. Uh, and the Lamedia wants to talk about the most pressure on LeBron. Try your father getting killed and still winning. Yeah. I mean, he, he retired after that came back. Absolutely amazing. All right. The next one. All right. Where is it? The comeback from retirement. So uh, this is when he had, after he had decided to play uh, baseball after his father was murdered in 1993, he retired for about a, a year and a half, came back into the NBA. And for me, it's something really this projected when I started watching Michael Jordan as a kid. Uh, I was about 10 years old at this time when he came back. And all the hype with him coming back and further on for me, I have a bias for this moment. The Space Jam came out when I was a kid. I love that movie. It made me fall in love with basketball. 
And then he came back and to me to have the most Cinderella and amazing comeback story, arguably in sports history, in team sports history, at the very least, if not individual sports history. I, bu I believe it's arguably the greatest comeback story of all time. Um, and it's something that I believe is unmatched, even though he didn't win that year, him coming back. And this isn't really necessarily a moment, um, but just I, I believe is a transcending moment. I believe that this moment helped cement him as truly being the GOAT is the comeback and then following on from that. So spoiler, if that didn't really explain where I would put that, um, I'll pull it up and I'll show you. I have to put it. I have to put it in the S tier. It's just it was just too amazing to come back and be the best player in the world, the greatest player in the world after not playing at the highest level of the game for over a year and a half. To me, it's the most of one of the most amazing feats in sports history. I don't think anything in basketball comes close for him retiring and being able to come back and be as successful as he was. It seems like he never missed a beat or even possibly got better. He won two more uh, MVPs. I believe he won two more all-star game MVPs. He won three more championships and three more scoring titles. To me, that's absolutely amazing. Um, so let me read some of the, the chat. Uh, uh, Jamal says, I feel uh, so shamed how I took Mike for granted dark growing up in Chicago. Do you know how many nights I fell asleep watching Jordan and the Bulls? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I get it, man. I mean, sometimes you just don't live in the moment. I know a lot of my haters say that about LeBron, but I do appreciate LeBron. I just think that I just think Michael was greater. That's it. I just don't think that LeBron is the GOAT. LeBron is a great player. Um, I just don't think he's near GOAT conversation. But I, but yeah. And then uh, Cincinnati says, it's crazy how MJ came back from a year without playing basketball and dropped 55 points on the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. Exactly. Who does that? Nobody does that except for him. Piece of time. Remember, everything in those moments are very special. I can tell everywhere I was every game of all six finals. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. All right, let's get into the next one. Yeah, I apologize for these delays. It's I'm working off of one screen. All right. The next is the 96 championship. And for, for this one, I, I think this is really, again, this is another catalyst of what brought him into the, the second three, Pete, getting Dennis Rodman. They had lost Horace Grant after MJ had left in 93. Uh, the Bulls had made a great run in 94, but, you know, they fell short. And then in, 90, in 95, they got pretty far. However, it didn't really, it didn't pan out. Michael Jordan only played, I believe, 15 games or something in the regular season before the playoffs. And I don't think that's crazy that they lost. Um, but then you go and you look at how they did after that throughout the 96 season. They had the best regular season record of all time until recently with the with the Warriors. I'm sorry. I got my kids are crying in the other room or fighting. Anyway, um, the uh, at 72 wins. Just give me one moment. I'm, I apologize. No, never mind. Anyway, uh, but yeah, they were 72 and 10. Uh, all time great team, all time great matchup against the, the Sonics. And they had an all time great playoff run as well. So I don't, I think they lost maybe, if I'm not mistaken, I think they lost one game until they faced the Sonics throughout that playoff series. I might be mistaken, but I know it was a great playoff run on top of it. A lot of people like to to mix up in comparison with the the Golden State Warriors when they say that LeBron's the goat because he beat the greatest team of all time with the uh, seventy three and nine Warriors. They had a terrible playoff run. They ended up losing to you know LeBron and Cast, 
And then after that, uh, the next year they got Kevin Durant, and then they kind of they kind of pretend like it's the same team, but it, it, it really it really wasn't. Ke- adding Kevin Durant really put him over the edge. They didn't have as great of a regular season record, but but either way, I digress. Uh, where do you all think this ranks? I'm gonna put I'm gonna go and show you what I how I rank them. I it sucks having one screen. I'm gonna go and I rank the '96 title. I rank it an A. Um, I I have it as an A because I again I think that's the beginning. The sa- same with like the same with the '91 title. Um, it's really the catalyst of starting that that second three peat. It was great, um, and I mean, it really, it, it, they had the great, the arguably the greatest team of all time that year. It's not really a moment, but the title in itself, um, just with that amazing team, I think was is absolutely noteworthy as one of the greatest moments, and it's the beginning of the culmination of the of the uh, well, not the culmination, but the. Um, of the second three, Peter really set it off. Um, let's go through some of the comments. MVP, All NBA, first team, All Defensive, All Star Game MVP, Finals MVP. It's up there. Yep. Uh, True Believer says he'd give it a B or C. Kev Hawk says A is fair. Yeah, I think I, I for me, I got I think A. Uh, some people say the '96 NBA Finals was Jordan's worst final statistically, and even though I don't agree with it. I watched some games of that series and Jordan did so much struggle a bit. I mean, he didn't play for a year and a half or, you know, before then, before that year. So Dark continuously complaining about first world problems of just one screen has to be one of the most bougiest comments. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. A lot of people just use one screen. Um, I I've gotten a little spoiled. I I would have three screens on my main setup, but I'm in the process of moon it, moving. So you're right. It is pretty bougie Denali. I just, I like being able to streamline this faster, but I have to overlap a lot of things. So I feel like I'm giving the show a disservice by doing that. But, uh, but yeah. All right. Let's get to the next one. Which is. The flu game. I think this might be one of the best pictures where Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan were still friends. And it was a nice, nice help me hug. And do you all think that he got poisoned or do you think he just got sick? Do you think he was hung over? Do you think that he really just caught the flu or do you think it was something else? I don't I don't know exactly what it was. It's called the flu game. I know in the last dance they were talking about that maybe somebody tried poisoning him. Um, from a pizza, which I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you know, how fans get it. People sometimes go over the edge with that stuff, but that, uh, that flu game, um, he went and he was, I believe he's, I had the stat line up. I forget it right now I, with all this stuff going on, on in the other room, but I think he had, well, I think he had like five assists, 12 rebounds and 37 points, something like that. Um, just give me, just give me one second. I'll, I'll be right back. I apologize. No, my, my wife tried calling me or something, but anyway, but, uh, but yeah, so I think it was an amazing game, um, but Denali was saying he was drunk, made his immune system run down. Drinking probably didn't have, uh, help. Pizza guys were like, "You, uh, how can we get Mike for the Jazz? Yeah, no, I, I think these were, it was probably a mixture of all things. Now, within itself, it's recognized as one of his greatest moments, although he was sick, uh, he was able to pull this off and have such a great stat line. It's famous. Um, and it's great. It's one of his greatest moments, I would argue. So where would I rank this? 
All right, let's pull it up. The flu game. I have to, this is one of those games that I just don't really, it, it, again, it's one of his greatest moments. It's not, I'm not trying to hate on it, but to what y'all are saying, uh, there's a good chance that he was drinking. He was known to do that, go out gambling. Um, you know what I mean? Kev Hawk says an F. Yeah. I mean, maybe it should be lower than the shot and then, yeah, or D. I got to put it down and, and low. Yodman says LeBron would have called in sick. Uh, Pizza Time says whether it's the flu or food poisoning, just MJ powering through it and still delivering should be at least an A. No, I totally get you. It's hard. It's hard with this. And I should have just ranked it one through 11 because that, that wouldn't seem like F is such a bad thing. F is such a bad ten or uh, tone to it. So and D as well. But for me, I, it's just one of those games that I, I never really looked at as amazing. Um, it, it is amazing. Don't get me wrong. But in respect to never really got people putting it above these other moments. But it is a great moment at that. I You cannot deny that. All right. Let's get to... The next one. And that's the 97 championship in total. Uh, this is one that, for me, outside of the flu game, it, it seems like it was somewhat um, unmemorable. I mean, I believe that Carl Malone won the MVP that year. It, I forget if it was 97 or 98, but I think it was 97. And the flu game, I think, was the most memorable, for me at least, the most memorable moment of that series. And not to say that that's a bad thing, because that's an amazing moment, and it, it deserves its own categorization. However, the 97, again, I'm just not huge on those middle middle parts of the story. A lot of the times that you go through a lot of the, the, uh, the trials and tribulations in the middle parts of the story, but this one they did really well. I mean, in comparison to the next year in 98 uh, through the regular season, I believe they still had the best record in the league. If I, I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure they're the best record in the league. So they came out on top of this great matchup. The Utah Jazz went to a couple of their Western Conference finals uh, when it was Carl Malone and John Stockton as well. I believe they went the year before in 96 against um, the Sonics that they made it to the Western Conference Finals and lost out to them, and then they went to the finals the next two years. So amazing team, well-deserved, a team that I think is wildly disrespected in today's age, the Utah Jazz, having the third highest uh, career score of all time um, and then the highest uh, assist and steals guy of all time in respect to uh, uh, totals of a career. I think they just get wildly disrespected as one of the great all-time teams. Uh, True Believer also says it's a, a C or a D, maybe. Yep. Uh, what, did, what did the rest of you think about this one? And I'm going to pull it up for this. Yep. Let's pull this up. Yep, I have to give it. Man, it's tough. I feel like I got to. Yeah, I feel like I got to give it a C. Uh, it's it's. I feel like I got to give it a C. It's just it's. It's just mess, as, as they say. I, I I never really. It wasn't really my thing. Um, still an amazing achievement getting over the hump against one of the all-time great teams. But I think that uh, all the other championships that he's had, and arguably even the 92 one, um, I believe was was greater or more impressive outside of that flu game. But, it, and Yadman, yeah, it is a significant piece of the story. You, you can't have 
the second three people without this this championship. I just believe I just think it has the least memorable things outside of the flu game um, that happened within that year. However, you know, that's impressive in itself. And again, it got categorized in its own way. All right, let's go to the last one. Which is. The second three, Pete, the 98 championship, the last dance. I mean, they made a whole documentary out of it. That was it wasn't it was supposed to be primarily focused on this year, but essentially it was just the Michael Jordan documentary, which I was fine with. I found it entertaining altogether. But um, the last dance, the 98 season, uh, it cemented his legacy, I believe, as the GOAT getting that second three, Pete. Um, getting another three title or excuse me, three scoring titles, two MVPs, two all-star game MVPs. And I believe he got all NBA and all defense as well for all three of those years. Um, and absolutely amazing. They were down on their luck, uh, in the, they were talking about how the team was falling apart, how they were getting old. They called it the last dance. They were going to get rid of Phil Jackson. They're going to blow up the team. Uh, Jerry Krause, the whole thing with that. So, and for me, this is as a kid, this is the last time that I really remember um, being up there. The, the, what I believe uh, true believer says that final shot, second three P completed, got to be S tier. That's, and that's where I go. And I that, should, in my opinion, should be called the shot for Michael Jordan, because I believe that's more famous, more relative in respect to his legacy. But it, but that's not called the shot. It's the, the 89. Uh, Cincinnati says, not going to lie, when Jordan hit that shot to win his sixth championship, I thought he pushed off on Byron Russell. And still to this day, I think MJ did push off because Byron Russell did slip. Yeah, he... I mean, I, I think he touched him. I don't know how much of a, you know, if it should have been a foul or not. But, uh, yeah, he definitely touched him. I don't think he, you know, raked him down. But I think he pushed off a little bit, yeah. But to me, this is one of the uh, – and then the steal, exactly, Kev Hawk. He stole it from Carl Malone, went up the court, and then daggered it. Absolutely amazing uh sequence there so we'll go i'll pull it up let me pull this up all right so for the 98 title i gotta i gotta put in the s tier I got to put in the S tier. It, for me, it's exact. Uh, Kev Hawk says it's movie like that. That in, entire year to close it out, the second three P to retire again on top. I mean, him going back to the Wizards. I don't want to say it ruined his legacy because that's a stretch. But if he had just stopped right there, I, I don't. I think a lot of people would find it hard to argue the ones that do now that he's the goat because it would be the picture perfect almost, um, you know, more or less career. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals says, don't forget Kev. He scored earlier to make a one point game. Then the steal happened and did the game winner happen. That's three clutch plays in a row. Yeah. What do you all think about my, my uh, list? Do you think that there's something wildly wrong? I'm sure everyone has their own opinion, but could you see how my list uh, do you think that my list makes sense? Or do you think that there's something wildly out of place now in respect to having a D and F and a C tier? Um, maybe you could just, maybe if you want to bump them up and just say, generally, would you put these, if you don't exact, if you wouldn't call it an F, would you say that the shot and the flu game are on the lower tiers and the 93 title and the, and the coming back from retirement are up on the higher tiers? Um, Piece of time says the goat's hand is so strong he can flick 200 pound Byron Russell. But uh, but yeah, I'm gonna put the link in the chat if anyone wants to call in. Um, 
Cincinnati says, I think it's a pretty good list. I'll give it a nine out of 10. Well, thank you. Yeah. And I, I, I agree to what was said before. It probably should have just been numbered because F makes it seem like it was a terrible moment. It wasn't a terrible moment. It was, you know, the shot was an absolutely amazing moment. I just think it was the least amazing moment. So I probably should have just put a numbered order. But that would have been funny because when I have all these that are si similarly the same. Um, but yeah, no, I, I get what, what, what y'all are saying with that. But I dropped the link if y'all want to call in. Um, if y'all have a great Michael Jordan moment that you want to share. I know it was mentioned in the chat. Uh, a couple times that wasn't talked about on this, please call in and talk about it. And if you think it's higher than any of these, um, if nobody calls in, I, I can, you know, I can answer some of your questions otherwise, or otherwise I'll, uh, I'll start shutting it off soon, but got time to call in. Thanks Kev. Yeah. I, I was trying to, I was trying to think of something new. I, I had done the, uh, the whole, you know, LeBron is not the GOAT series and then or top 15. And then I did the Michael Jordan is the GOAT. And I and I, I went, I did all the comparisons. And as I was doing, I'm like, man, you know, I'm just going to keep saying he's better than or he's greater than everyone because of all the things that he did. And I, I felt bad because I felt like I uh, I could have sold it more. But it just got boring just saying he was greater than everybody else. You know, it. it it's something that people pretend that they don't understand. And when I went and I had to explain it through the, the, these major ways that people identify greatness, just like, man, everyone knows this. Why do I have to say this? Um, and that's why I felt like the, the LeBron thing was more important because people try to push him over, even though he isn't really the top of anything outside of career totals in, in scoring. Um, and I'm not saying that's not important. That's cool. He is the greatest career scorer in respect to longevity and accumulation of all time because he has the most. I just don't think he's the greatest scorer of all time. Um, and he was only the greatest scorer in one year that he ever played. But I'm going to give – I'm going to – I'll drop the link again. I'm pretty sure it didn't really go that far, but – but yeah, do y'all have any questions for me? Um, if not, I'll run my, my gums about a, a couple other things and I'll get off of here unless somebody wants to call in. So um, one of my other favorite moments or one of the other greatest moments for me of Michael Jordan, which I don't think deserves to be on this list, but it's one of my favorites, is when he dunks on Dikembe Mutombo. And he gives him the finger wag because the Kimbe Mutombo said, oh, Michael Jordan can't dunk on me, this, that, or the other thing. And obviously, Michael Jordan was known as a great dunker, finisher at the rim, a great scorer. And the Kimbe was, you know, uh, the immovable object versus Michael Jordan as the unstoppable force. So they had that little beef against each other. And then when he finally did it and then he gave – um, Dikembe, the little finger wag, I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And that for me was one of my favorite greatest moments outside of, because there was something behind it. And, and a lot of the other ones, uh, that, uh, um, the dunk on what's his face, uh, Patrick Ewing, when he does that, uh, when he, he turns his back, turns around, goes baseline and then dunks on him was absolutely awesome. True Believer says, I love the switch hand mid-flight shot against the Lakers also. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, that was absolutely amazing. That was in the finals, right? In the 91 finals? Um, I believe it happened then, which was absolutely amazing as well. Another great finals moment. But there's so many, there's so many great moments, man. It, it's, it's uh, it's just it's funny, and when I like when I think of LeBron, I think of a few great moments. I, I one really cool moment that I like about LeBron, or uh, you know, uh, as a poster, let's say, is the uh, the one where he uh, he gets the lob from Dwayne Wade, and then Dwayne Wade is 
turning around baseline after he lobs um, just to be nice about LeBron. I think that's a great poster that he has. Some of the, a lot of the, the, the moments that LeBron had in the finals, I never really liked the chase down blocks. And then a lot of them were just kind of, he just got these stats. They, there weren't really particular moments that you could think of. You know what I mean? Um, it's something that I, I I don't think I could really make. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I could. I'd have to look at it more. Um, I mean, he had a lot of great individual playoff moments, I guess, or games per se, that a lot of them he lost. Uh, but still, and that's and, and even with the Michael Jordan thing with Larry Bird, that's why I put it low because – or lower – because he didn't win. It was just cool that Larry Bird said he was amazing. Pizza Time uh, agrees that that's a great moment after so long. Finally got over Mount Matumbo. Yeah. And then even though this is off the court, I love I love me Space Jam. <laughs> you know, that was, you know, that that really was one of the things that got me into basketball as a kid. I just thought it was great. Just made Michael Jordan seem larger than life, uh, you know, saved, saved the NBA from aliens, whatever. But uh, that's when it, I think making that movie really helped propel his, a lot of his child or children fans as well. I think that that helped um, make him more popular. And even, even with LeBron with Space Jam 2, my, my son prefers Space Jam 2 over Space Jam 1. Uh, which sucks, but I guess he likes video games and it's a new age. So I guess you got to just accept it as it is. What is my favorite of MJ's iconic commercials? Um, man, I don't know, dude, there's a lot of them. I'd probably have to say either uh, the two ones that I like is the McDonald's one with Larry Bird. And then the one where he's old and he plays himself. Those are a tie for me. Um, I like when he's trying, you know, he's playing the younger version of himself and he's getting, you know, they're having a war and the different play styles over time. I really like that commercial for one reason. Then I like the Larry Bird one because they're doing all these crazy trick shots and stuff and they're betting on McDonald's or whatever. So it's pretty cool. Um, Piece of time says, love that too. Many called unnecessary, but it's just nice to watch and show MJ's artistry. Even Obama mentioned it in his medal ceremony for, for MJ. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what are some of your favorite commercials? All of you. Again, I'll, I'll drop the link if anybody came in and wants to talk about some of their favorite Michael Jordan moments. Um, and yeah, otherwise, but, uh, I, and one thing that I think is funny is that even when he came back with the wizards, a lot of people like to pretend like he was garbage, but he was still one of the, the stars of the league, even though he, you know, you can argue he wasn't himself. And I, I think that's fair to say, but he was still, um, before he started getting injured, a top 10 score in the league, uh, he was a he was still a force in the league even after being retired a couple years again and being in his late thirties. And then, uh, not necessarily that this is a a moment for him, but when he was when the Mariah Carey wore that Wizards dress, I don't know. That's one of the the memorable ones for me. But then he uh, that that one handed uh, that one play that he did where he gripped the ball. Um, out on the wing, but a, but a three point line and he goes and he just was juking the guy with one hand. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, the ones you mentioned also the one where he dunked on a goal so high that he was afraid to land. I might know. I probably seen that one. I just don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look at it. Uh, Wizards Jordan is underrated. Yeah, he is. I mean, he was still averaging over 20 points per game and five or six rebounds and assists. So I don't know how that's garbage, but you know what I mean? Especially after having a bad knee and then 
getting more injured. So, you know, but yeah, I, I definitely think he's underrated. And that's a, that's a thing too. And, the, and this is and when I, you know, was talking about statistical titles and championships and influence, the, the numbers went down statistically across the board because it, it, you know, it was still slow. Not that the nineties weren't slow, but it, it got, I think it got slower, even on paper, the, the dead ball era. So it was bound to lose some points of just how everything was going along that as well. So, I mean, it is what it is, but how about any, any of you have another Michael Jordan thing that, uh, moment that you want to talk about? Yeah. Michael Jordan was playing on one leg Washington wizard years. Exactly. So, you know, people give him all this hate for it and, you know, he wasn't getting the numbers that he did before, but he was still one of the best in the league. So he just wasn't, uh, I guess he had to putter versus fly sometimes, but, but yeah. All right. I'm going to drop the link one more time. But yeah, no, I think this was fun. Um, got to do a little list. And uh, do you want to do you want to see more rankings like this? Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, amongst all time greats or something like that. Um, and maybe uh, just number them or categorize them in different aspects. I don't know, maybe a pyramid, but it's something that I, I might want to might do in the future. That up and under shot where he glided from one side to the other against the Nets will always mesmerize me. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to see that one. I've probably seen it. I've seen a lot of highlight videos. I'd have to I'm sure I've seen it. I just don't. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. But um I want to thank you all for coming and joining me here. It was fun. Uh T B True Believer, Kev Hawk. Uh, Denali Gordon pizza pizza time um, Cincinnati Bengals and uh, and others the odd man empire thank you all for joining me it was fun I'm gonna get out of here I usually do these longer um, nobody wants to call in which is fine so I'll uh, go hang out with uh, the wife and kids and for everyone Michael Jordan